The template gets its power from the land through a 125 kilometer control cable called an umbilical. This cable carries huge amounts of electricity, enough to power 20,000 homes. Combined in this umbilical cable are tubes carrying hydraulic fluid, fiber optics, and electrical cables. The welds on these tubes have to be as strong as the welds on the pipeline. This is the power and control connection to the template. Without this, the template will be just a thousand tons of useless metal at the bottom of the North Atlantic. But how do they deal with a cable that is a staggering 125 kilometers long? The cable is built in a factory right on the dock. As the cable is made, it is fed onto a giant spool on the deck of the Scandi Neptune. Once the 120 kilometers of continuous cable is spooled up, it will head out to the Ormond Lang gas field to connect the control room to the four underwater templates. But now they have to prepare the seabed. The bottom of the ocean under the North Sea is a treacherous place. And as you're about to discover, the engineers building the world's longest underwater pipeline are facing a mountain of trouble. 8,000 years ago, two pieces of Norway, each about the size of the island of Tobago, slid into the sea, causing a mega tsunami. The landslide, known in Norwegian as the Storega, created a huge shelf in the ocean's topography. The Ormond Lang gas field is on the edge of the Storega, locked inside the huge depression left behind by the slide. This underwater disaster created a mountainous seabed with peaks that rise between 25 to 55 meters. But the biggest concern for Hydro is how to get the pipeline up the Storega slide face, a whopping 300 meters that's nearly as tall as the Empire State Building. Underwater surveys reveal a rugged and fractured seabed, but the unstable sediments have long ago disappeared. The rock is more than stable enough and it would take a new ice age to dismantle it again. But the study has made them more aware of the seabed and the pathway they will need to clear for the pipeline that will connect the underwater gas rig to the land. First, they must build a 3D model of the sea floor and find the easiest route. What they have created is a virtual reality program. With this model, the engineers are able to plot the best pipeline route. 